morning from Future Ventura, the second largest of the Spanish Canary Islands here in the Northeast Atlantic Ocean. It is a beautiful morning. The sun is just setting over there on my left. I can see the hotel behind the camera and the beach here is looking stunning in the morning sunlight. The island is situated about 100 kilometers west of continental Africa, about 1100 kilometers southwest of mainland Spain, and about 15 kilometers south of Lanzarote, another island in the archipelago. I can see just across the waters beyond a smaller islet called Lobos Island. Apologies for my voice, I have a, a slight summer cold, but I have for the last few days been staying at the Hotel Rui Palace Tre Ailes, which is an all-inclusive holiday resort in the north of the island. I'll tell you a little bit more about Fortaventura in a few minutes, but before we do that, I wanted to get off the beach and head up to the hotel room and give you a quick tour. Made it back to my room and I thought I would start off by telling you that from what I can make out, there are three different types of rooms here at the hotel. There is the front where you get a pool view stroke sea view. And then here at the back is a dune view, which I'll show you in just a second. And then on either side of the hotel, there seems to be these larger executive rooms that overlook both the waterfront and the sand dunes. So you kind of get the best of both worlds with those rooms. I guess some rooms are bigger than others, but I've got to say, I'm pretty happy with the room that I'm in. It's been kind of perfect for what I want. So without any further ado, let me give you a quick tour of it. And we'll start off with the shower stroke bathroom. Straight ahead of me here is the bath and shower. No problems at all with that, it's been really good. And you get a soap dispenser there as well, conditioner is provided along with soap and body milk, decent sized sink and a hair dryer up there, although I've been using that as a bit of a clothes dryer. Nice and spacious, toilet just on my left side and then a couple of robes there for good measure as well. And as we come out towards the main bedroom, we get a, a partitioning door, which is a really good idea I think. So if you don't wanna get any of that noise from the hallway, then you can just close that and you get a very, very quiet night's sleep, which is all good. So this is the main room itself. Really nice wood effect, very large, sizable, lots of decent gizmos and controls in here. I'll show you that in a second. There is the fan up there, it does come with air conditioning. Here's a lot of the controls where you can switch all the lights and fans on and off. Saves you having to get up to do it before you go to sleep. Lots of drawer space and charging points and lamps. Over here, I should say as well, before I move too far on, a nice comfortable chair area where you can just sit and relax. On this side, we have the air conditioning controls. There we go. I've currently got it set to about 14. More sockets and light switches, a telephone. In here, we've got lots and lots of wardrobe space and also a safe, which is really good. Some extra drawers down there. I don't think you'll ever run out of space at this hotel. That's uh, probably a fair statement, I would say. More clothes in here. There we go, lots more space. A case packing bench there with space underneath for shoes and all of that, a television, along with some glasses and another table lamp. Lots, lots more drawer space there as well. And in here, one of the bits that I do love, I've got to say, is a fridge which is stocked up free of charge every day. We've got some beers in here. Let's have a look. Amp still. Very, very good. I've got to say 5%. Some water and some soft drinks as well. Coke, Fanta, lemon and orange. Coca-Cola again, all good. And uh, as I come around, I'll just give you one more shot of the room itself along with the large French windows here, taking me out onto the balcony. Here we go, I've got two chairs, a table, and lots of space to either sit and relax, watch the views, or to dry my swimming costume as I have been the last couple of days. And then over in the distance there is the dune view, as I said. If I come around to the right here, you'll see lots of other balconies and 
I can actually see the sea there in the distance along with an island on the right hand side. And then as I come around, we've got palm trees, the car park of the hotel, and lots and lots of sand dunes as well. And uh, on my left side as well, more balconies and more sandy beach. So I think what we're going to do now is head out of the room and up to the roof, believe it or not, because I have found a space here at the hotel, which is way up there and it delivers fantastic views of the pool area and the two beaches that the hotel is positioned alongside. When I said I was heading up towards the roof, I was not kidding. I am literally now on the red roof. I've had to climb an old steel fire escape to get up here. I think it's a publicly accessible area. Perhaps people can just come up here and admire the views and what views we have. I can see just to my left hand side now and I'll talk you through them as I walk around up here. Over in the distance there is the sand dune view that you would get a great view of if you're a little bit higher up in the room than I am. And then in the distance, all you can see pretty much are these incredible sand dunes that roll over into the towns in the distance which are at the foothills of quite an impressive mountain range. There's also a fairly busy road that you can see in the middle of the sand and I think that's the road essentially that you would take from the north to the south of the island. As I walk around a little bit further we'll take a look down towards the beach where I started the video. It is just a phenomenal white sand beach that seemingly goes on forever. You can see in the distance there it struts out into the beautiful blue ocean. Now let's just walk over to the other side of the roof. It is definitely warm and as I was saying earlier very very little wind. I mean there is no wind that I'm worried about that's going to be affecting the mic and it is very very still up here considering I'm on about the 7th or 8th floor of the hotel. Now behind the camera this is what it's all about the pool area of the hotel itself. There are two pools both are about 1 meter 20 deep. One has steps to access it, the other a slope which is ideal if you find it difficult to get in or out of the pool itself. They are freshwater pools which means that instead of chlorine there is salt water keeping everything clean and hygienic. And then this fairly large seating area with lots of deck chairs and umbrellas as well as tennis courts over there in the distance and the beginning of yet another beach which I'll tell you about in just a second. There's also a pool bar in the center there so you can go along and pick up all of your drinks and snacks if you want. There is also a very small paddling pool which I think is a children's pool with seating around it and a jacuzzi that overlooks the beach and the sand. It is perfect for getting into at the end of a long pool day. And then the final thing I wanted to show you is the second beach area. Once again, lined with palm trees, this incredible white, pure quality sand and cyan ocean. And in the distance there is a mountain peak. I did think about hiking it, but I think it's fair to say that the free cocktails and the free food here at the hotel kept me from doing it. Hotel Rui Palace Tre Ailes is also equipped with a spa, a gym and a sauna. The two beaches are accessed through security gates with a fob attached to your room key that makes it easy to come and go as you please. The palace-like reception features a grand seating area with elaborate tables, chairs and even some dazzling chandeliers for good measure. There's a 24 hour front desk and representatives from the tour operators are available during the day. At the other end of reception, I found a shop stocked with all the things you might have forgotten to pack, as well as inflatables for the pool and plenty of postcards. The piano bar is where it all happens in the evening. Entertainers take to the stage nightly just outside. As for the food, 
I've got to say that the quality, hygiene and table service is amongst the best I've ever seen at an all-inclusive resort. The restaurant is open for three meals a day, breakfast, lunch and dinner, and the times and menus are published outside the night before. Breakfast is a series of decisions. You could go all in with a cooked breakfast and hot drink, or you could settle for cereals, croissants, fruits and juices. Whatever you like, it is highly likely to be available from the breakfast buffet. Lunchtime brings everything from a full-on meal to selected snacks and treats. I found myself mostly going for either a hamburger or a slice of pizza, but there was plenty more to choose from. And then there's dinner, which often started off with bread and a bowl of soup, but soon turned into an extravagant feast of meats, fish, vegetables, and much, much more. It was hard to resist the carvery and all the roast dinners that went along with it. Just about every type of dessert was catered for, although I found it impossible to resist the soft scoop vanilla ice cream and strawberry sauce. With all this food available, it was hard to feel hungry outside of the designated dining times, but if you do, there's a snack room not too far away from the pool, which will keep you going until the next meal time. So I thought I would give you a little bit of information on the island while I'm here. The population of Fort Aventura is about 120,000 people. It has 188 miles of coastline, that's about 300 kilometers and its highest peak is just over 800 meters, which is just around about two and a half thousand feet. So it's not as mountainous as some of the other Canary Islands. The dimensions of the island are approximately 100 kilometers in length and about 30 kilometers in width. That is about 60 by 20 miles. And even though it is the second largest in terms of size here in the Canary Islands, it is the fourth in line when it comes to population after Tenerife, Gran Canaria, Lanzarote, and then we have Fortaventura. Let me give you a little bit of information as well on the weather while I'm here. It is currently early November, so it is the perfect destination in Europe anyway for some winter's sun. The temperatures during the day at the moment are hitting about 27 degrees and it's about 22, 23 in the evenings. It is warm enough to sunbathe, warm enough to get in the pool, warm enough to get in the sea and warm enough to stay in a t-shirt for the whole week. That's my kind of place. I also read some reports about wind before I came out here. It is apparently a very windy island, but that is mainly during the summer. There are windsurfing competitions and all sorts here in July, August and early September. But here in November, to be honest, there is hardly any wind at all. And I've been here now for about four or five days. And if you want to leave behind resort life for just a little bit, you can do some exploring around the resort itself, including these rock pools that I'm currently walking around and standing on. And then further afield, the entire island of Fortaventura was declared a biosphere reserve in 2009, and it boasts a pretty much untouched west coast, which have mountains and valleys and incredibly scenic, remote, isolated areas, perfect for exploring. I'm finding it difficult to shout with this voice, but I'll give it a try. Hopefully you found the video useful. I am off for a walk now along the beach, but thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Good afternoon from Fort Aventura.